Hello and welcome back to another Prompt Muse tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a fully animated AI character. The beauty of this technique is that you don't have to act out the scenes before. In fact, you don't need to look like your actor or your actress. So this method could potentially be used in the movie industry. If not just the concept artwork, it could be used for an entire movie itself. For this tutorial, I'm going to be training a realistic data set for my puppet. So I'm going to be using myself so you can judge the likeness at the end for yourself. I gather up loads of images of myself. I then train it with Koya Laura and then once I've done that I use Character Creator to create a puppet and you do not need to know any 3D. There is no learning curve to this software. You're basically using sliders and dragging and dropping assets onto your 3D character. It is super simple to use. Obviously you can go down the Blender route and the MetaHuman route if you want to, but I just warn you there is a learning curve so it's up to you what you want to do. But my workflow is through Character Creator. This means I can then switch out to any character using the data set. So once I've got those rendered files of my puppet, I can then switch out those data sets from one character to another and it's a really easy and efficient way of working. So. Let's dive in and get on with the tutorial. Step one, preparing your training images. I've prepared various images of myself. Put some images that are more like you rather than photographs with a filter on because trust me, it works 10 times better if you do that and you will get the likeness a lot better. It's important that you choose your head your body, some full bodies in there, some close-ups, some far away. You need to ensure that your hairstyle is quite different in each image, that you're taking from different profiles, that your backgrounds change, that your outfits change. If you put too many headshots into your training data, you'll end up with things like this because the AI doesn't know what the body is, so it gets confused. So you need to put some body shots in there. I'm using a website called Burmy, which is absolutely free to use and it crops your images down to the size you want. So I'm going to be using 512 by 512 because that's pretty much my resolution. You can go up to 768 by 768, but remember that's going to use more VRAM and take longer to train. So once I've done that, I want to rename all my files. So click on rename and just put X in the box and save as zip. And that will save all your files in numerical order. So one.png. 2.png because that's how you want it. Head over to Google Drive and simply save your zip file there. Step two, training your data set. I'm using the Linkwaf Koya Laura Dream Booth. We are going to make sure that we're logged into our Google account here and then we're going to press connect here. So once you've done both of those, we can start the training. Simply come down to step one. All we need to do is check the mount drive button and run that cell. And this is going to mount your Google Drive. So I'm going to click connect to Google Drive. It's going to give you some warnings about connecting to an un Google Alford notebook. Now that's running. Once that's completed, you'll get a green check next to it. So this downloads all the dependencies into your file structure over here. Now remember, this is remote. This isn't on your PC. So once you come out of here, you'll lose everything. But this is why we connect the Google Drive so we can pull files across from our Google Drive. And then once we've finished, we can take the train model and export that to our Google Drive. So we're just going to come down here. The 1.2 Open Special File Explorer. Ignore that. That's fine. We don't need to do that. The default setting here is for anything version free, which is more of an anime style model. And if you click here, there's a few more preloaded links in there. If I click on Stable Diffusion 1.5, that's good for me because I'm doing a realistic character. I just want to chip in and say the Stable Diffusion 1.5 base model is a good all-rounder training file to use. Obviously, you can use whatever you want, but if you're starting off, this is a good one to learn with. You can see in this bit below, you can actually load in your custom model, which means you can go to the Hugging Face link, for example, a good model to use is realistic, realistic version two. You so you can get the hugging face link for your model and place it in there and run that cell. 
but we're not doing that for this tutorial so I'm just going to leave the space underneath which is stable diffusion 2 model blank because we're not going to be using that and then just ignore 2.2 we're not going to be running our own custom model so 2.3 download available they sometimes you might notice when you switch models in automatic 111 or whatever program you're using that the images are really desaturated and lost their colors that's usually down to the they not being detected or being corrupted so we are going to load in the stable diffusion 1.5 they which is already there so it's a stable diffusion they and that's going to again just download it all into our file structure and then we're just going to hit on run on that and then we come down to 3.1 locating train data directory so this is going to create some file path to where our train underscore data file is and that's where all our input data set images so my face images will be going into that folder and don't worry you don't have to do anything it does it automatically for you so I'm going to hit run on that cell once again and it says your train data directory so if we go and have a look so expand the Laura down here by the way if you don't have this open it's this folder here to go into here uh, go to Laura and you've got your regularization uh, data and your train data do not drag and drop your images into here wait we're going to be doing that automatically on to 3.2 unzip data set so this zip file underscore url so this is why we zipped our file up and put it onto our google drive because we're now going to grab it so if you go to drive this is essentially your google drive my drive and then i'm going to come down and find my zip file which is 100 underscore prompt muse images dot zip i'm going to click on the three dots there and copy path and then i'm just going to paste in the top zip file underscore url i'm going to leave the unzip underscore two blank i'm just going to close this hierarchy here so we can see what we're doing and you can see there it's extracted all my files from that zip file into that new folder so we're going to come down to 3.3 which is the image scraper again i'm not going to use this this is based on more or less anime databases so what it does is scrape regularization images which i don't want to do because i'm not using anime so i'm going to ignore this but if you are using anime you know you can do it here nor 3.3 data clearing this is to do with the cell above it you're scraping all these images you might not be aware what they actually are there will probably be some in there um but you know hopefully it. no don't do that and the convert transparency images well it says what it does so if the image has a transparent background that's very hard for machine learning so you want to convert that and also random colors as well so you check that if you're doing the anime and scraping the images which we're not going to do okay so let's go down to 4.2 which is data annotation we're going to be using a blip captioning which is tagging images with a description this is used for realistic imagery the one below it which is the way food diffusion is used more for anime so we're just going to be using this blip captioning over here so i'm not going to change any of these settings i'm going to leave them as default and run that cell what that will be doing is reading the input images that i put into the google collab it's then going to be describing what it sees in the images everything it moves out of the description is what it's going to train upon so it's going to describe my microphone the fact that i'm wearing a necklace or potentially a brown top this means it's not going to train upon those things which makes it so much easier to create a way more flexible model when i'm generating the images later on so i'm not stuck in this room with this necklace and a brown top on so to show you what i mean we're just going to show you the files it created so if you come to your files laura and then expand on train data you can see it's generated these caption files here so if we just pick any image here 13 and you can see i've got a microphone and a necklace so it should pick up on those attributes so i'm going to click the caption that goes along with that image and yeah it said a woman sitting in a chair holding a microphone so exactly that now i can actually add on to this and add necklace if i didn't want it to train on me wearing a necklace but i kind of like my necklace and yeah it'd be good to have that in the model as well so you can edit these further if you want to but for this tutorial i'm not going to do that i'm just going to leave it as is so i'm just going to close those images there and close that window i'm going to ignore the wavy diffusion tag as i said that's for anime and i'm going to ignore the custom caption tag this creates you a text file caption which again i'm going to ignore that now we're on to training model so in 5.1 model config so if you've used stable diffusion version 2 to train your model you need to check these two boxes here I haven't I've used stable diffusion 
version 1.5 so I'm going to leave those unchecked. Under the project name give your project name as something that you will remember so I'm going to just call mine prompt tutorial and then underneath it you've got pre-trained model name all so I need to change this to my stable diffusion trained model we downloaded all these dependencies in the first cells this would have made you a pre-trained underscore folder so if you just expand that and then within there sits your safe tensors model so if you go with the three dots click on it copy path and simply just paste that in there so we have the VAE, so the VA file, which controls the color in your images. So we also need to grab that and that would have installed during the first cell as well. So that will be in the VA folder. So repeat that process, copy that path and just simply paste it in there. Now this is where it's going to be saving your finalized models. And I say models because it's going to create multiple versions, but we'll get to that later. Once you've closed this Google notebook, this will all go, all these files will disappear. Make sure you check output to drive and that will save it to your Google Drive and just run that cell. So you can see here the output path is content drive, my drive, Laura output. So there'll be a folder on your Google Drive called Laura and it will be an output file. We're getting to the most important settings here. So we want to keep the train repeats to 10 got the instance token I'm just going to keep mine at mksks now you will see you like random names sometimes like sks this is because it's not a name that stable diffusion associates with something so it's not going to call it up so by associating mksks with my model it knows it's calling up my model my image then you keep that as is if you're not sure just keep it as mksks styles so we are not training a style we are training a woman or you can put person i actually prefer to put person you can put woman it's up to your own discretion if you want to do that resolution we're doing 512 by 512 because we have input images that are 512 by 512 if you're doing 768 put 768 here just change it up the slider just leaving all these settings here as default and I'm just going to run that cell so we come down to 5.3 law and optimization config but you really really need to experiment with the settings yourself to see if you can get a better result because obviously you are trading different images than I am but however I will give you my settings because I have done a lot of tests come down to the convolution dim which I'm going to be setting quite low at eight and the convolution alpha I'm going to be setting at one and then we come down to network dim which I'm going to set at 16 and then I'm going to change the network alpha to eight so these settings actually have huge influence on your model I used to do the settings at 128 by 128 but I've played around and I quite like these settings for my realistic models what settings might work for me might not work for you guys because of different training sets different resolutions and all that but I digress okay I'm gonna get leave the optimizer config as add-in w8 bit so the first learning rate I'm going to change to 5e-4 so the text encoder learning rate i'm going to change to 1e-4 and then the learning rate scheduler i'm going to change to cosine with restarts the warm-up steps i'm going to do 0.05 and to be honest i'm quite happy with that so this is probably going to be a learning rate of about 950 steps but we'll see once we hit run. So we're going to run that cell and then we're going to go to 5.4 training config. I'm going to leave low RAM on. I'm going to enable sample prompt. I'm going to leave the sampler as DDM. Noise offset, I'm going to leave at zero. Sometimes I go 0 0.01. I'm going to be creating 10 epochs here, which will save a file at every learning stage, which means I can test the files out in my web UI at the end to see if it's either undercooked or overcooked or just about right. I like to do about 10 because it gives me a nice diverse range to pull from. The so train batch sizes. Now you can go quite low. You can go to one. I'm probably going to go to two and see how it goes from there. So the batch size is, is how many files it's training together. If I'm training six, it's going to be a lot quicker. 
than it will be for two. If I went to one, I would probably completely run out of RAM. So if you do have a RAM issue, try sticking to six or higher. But if you don't have any RAM issues whatsoever, you can train on anything as low as one here. The mixed and save precision, I'm both leaving those at FP16 and my epochs save every epoch. So that's 10 epochs I should have at the end. I'm saving the model as a save tenses model and I'm leaving this all as default here. So that's pretty simple. So I'm gonna run that cell. And now we come to our final cell. You'll be glad to hear. All you need to do is just run that cell and leave everything as default and let the training commence. This might take probably about 30 to 40 minutes. If I wanted it to be done quicker, I would actually increase the batch size. Hopefully all this makes sense. I wanted to describe what I'm doing as I do it. So you have at least a sort of understanding of what's going on, which hopefully again will allow you to make changes to suit your training data. Once the training is complete, you do not have to do any of the remaining cells in the notebook. Your files will now be saved automatically into your Google Drive. So head over to your Google Drive. You will have a LoRa file in there, an output file, and in there lives your LoRa files. And remember I said it would save a file at every training step and we said 10 in this demonstration so it's given us 10 files here as you're probably aware i use automatic 111 on runpod and the link for the instructions are all here so if you don't want to use automatic 111 locally on your computer and you don't want to have to set up a runpod like i've got the developer of this koya laura notebook has just come out with a brand spanking new automatic 111 notebook with control net one and the brand new control net number two as well as the ability to use your newly trained laura files you can use the caligraphy Restro Collab UI and it's basically automatic 111 to generate your images. So I just thought I'd throw that in there as an additional option. Now grab these files, download them and load them into your stable diffusion model LoRa file. Just whack them all in there. Step three, creating our puppet. Now underneath the generate button, you'll see this sun icon here, give that a click. And then this will open up this panel along here. Select Laura and you should see your Laura files now in there. Now, if you don't, you can always click the refresh button. You can test out all these files here by clicking in on each file that will then load its tag up into the prompt like this. So you just test them all out, just use one at a time. You can also control the weights of these LoRa files as well by adjusting this figure. So I'm just going to load in my LoRa file with a prompt as well as a negative prompt and just run it through and see what it looks like. So I'm quite happy with the overall state of my LoRa file. It does look like me. So I'm just going to create an image of me bald. I'm going to be taking this bald image of myself and dragging and dropping that into the headshot plugin, which then generates me a 3D model of my face. I can go in and sculpt this further if I want to, but I'm just using this as a puppet or a guide for the AI. It doesn't have to look great. It just kind of has to look sort of similar to me. Once I'm happy with the face and the body shape, I then add some hair. Again, it's super easy. I'm just dragging and dropping from a library. Now, once I've finished with my character, I'm now going to export it to iClone. So these programs work together in a pipeline. So iClone is more of an animation program. So this is where I'm gonna be adding the facial animation as well as the body idle. I use a plugin called Motion Live. So I just activate Motion Live and I've downloaded the Motion Live app on my phone here. All links are below in the description. It's super easy to use. All you're doing is recording your facial movements and that's being applied to your 3D model in real time. So I've just dragged and dropped a lighting situation in here and got some physics on the hair and I'm pretty much ready to render. Come over to the render panel, which is here. And I have selected PNG sequence. I actually went 768 by 768 in the end. Try and be divisible by 16 if you can. And we come down here and I'm just doing 300 to 500 frames. And then I'm gonna export those as PNG. So we're gonna jump back into automatic 111 and I'm gonna go through the settings I'm using. I'm using image to image and I've loaded in my LoRa here. 
remember the buttons over here and then I've just added a simple prompt because I don't want the prompt to fight the original image that's quite important so you want to keep the prompt as brief as possible do not put too many details that are not in the image that you want to create then we have the negative prompt which is as important as this prompt up here so you can copy my one I'll put it down in the description below so this is our rendered image added in here so the sampling method I have set to dpn plus plus sde you can use whatever you want I've had good results with Euler A I've had good results with K M Carraris sampling steps I'm keeping relatively low for this width and height I'm going for 768 by 768 the same as my input denoising strength I'm keeping low so I'm keeping the denoising strength at 11 actually also you'll notice my CFG scale is down six as well again we want to pull from this image as much as we can and apply the LoRa over the top without the prompt compromising things too much so I've already set my seed because I've tested this out already when you do this just render a minus one seed until you get something you like and then lock it in with the reuse button so on control net I've enabled head and I have the model enabled as well I haven't changed anything from the default settings here I've got a secondary model in as well which I've enabled canny and enabled the canny model again I haven't changed any of the default settings so let's render and see what it creates us that looks like me like on a really good day <laughs> and it's following the mouth movements as well which we need for lip syncing i have seen so much ai generation where the mouth is just a blurry mess using my workflow you can now get precise mouth lip syncing this is why i made the model on me so you can see that it is working okay so we're now going to batch render these frames which will give us a frame by frame animation and to do that head over to batch and put your input so where your 3d files are sitting on your drive and then your output where you want them to render to and then hit generate and congratulations we have completed our animation all that is rendering i want to show you something really cool and this is why i like this workflow i literally can come over and switch my checkpoint file and run that again and look at that it's created a semi anime style version with a click of a button so you can literally change the render type by using your diffusion checkpoint i think this is really cool and this is a great starting point from where things are going to go from here now we've got control net 2 which has just come out which i'm not using in this video so that's going to take things to a whole new another level so i've simply just thrown those frames into after effects from automatic 111 if you have davinci resolve use the dirt removal and the d flicker times two in there because that will give you really nice smooth results to your animation so i'm going to hit spacebar so you can have a look at the animation i've slowed it down so you can see the frames are blending so well into each other as probably not a very good animation I did there but you can see the technique I switched the checkpoint model over I didn't change any of the settings I'd probably go back in and change some settings to make the anime version smoother but that shows you how quickly you can flick essentially the AI renderer to change and then that took about two minutes to render those anime frames so I would love to see what you guys make with this workflow so please tag me in your social media so I can have a look so I love Love looking through all the creative projects everybody's doing with AI at the moment I put all my AI creative projects and workflows all on my social media as well on Instagram I'm prompt muse on Twitter I'm prompt muse and on discord there is a link below so I'm really really excited to see what you guys create with this this tutorial will be written up step by step on the prompt muse website as well and we have a fantastic weekly newsletter that surrounds latest and greatest in AI tech so please join that on the prompt muse website I thank you for watching this video video i really appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up i do have a buy me a coffee link down in the description and that is just 
to buy me a coffee. I don't put any content behind any paywalls. I like to make sure that all my content's free and accessible to everybody. And having that allows me to continue to do that. So I thank you very much. This video has been days in the making because I have had to test out so much stuff and variations to get this to work. So I know you guys appreciate that. Please share this video on your social media and at me as well when you do it because I like to see that that's amazing and I can say thank you to you as well so yeah I think that will do it for today bye bye